Yeah. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Like if I sit, if I sit in another room, would you hear me from there? Yep. You can, okay. I can hear you good right now. And um, so, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of the Con Family Show. Have we got a treat for you today? You know, it's kind of interesting because here at the Con Family, we have a goal of changing the world. People think that's a crazy goal, think it's unobtainable, kind of laugh at us sometimes, but the cool part of, of it is, is that we get to watch it happening every single day. Um, it's truly amazing watching the way that the worlds change, you know, and we say here all the time that changing the world starts with your own. You start with your own world, you change your own world for the better, and when, once you've changed your own world for the better, then you have a possibility of being able to help, help other people change theirs. You know, it's kind of like loving yourself. If you don't love yourself, you can't love others either. And so, Damn straight. Yeah. so if we've got a really special guest here today, a good friend of ours, Grant Lipman is in the house. He lives up in Maine, up there in the great Northeast. And, uh, you know, we're really excited to have him on the show today because I think he's got a really powerful story to tell. And, uh, you know, I think that Grant is a lot like a lot of people that are out there when it comes to this water, to this this opportunity. And so really excited to hear your story today, Grant. How the heck are you, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. I mean, I've been doing great. I've had the machine for maybe, what is it, today's Tuesday. It'll be two weeks tomorrow. So, I mean, I couldn't be more thrilled, man. I You've been bugging my ear for about a year and a half. And uh, I finally took the bait. You know, so you got, a, you got yourself a big fish, man. <laughs> You know, I'm always so excited when I can get people to make the wise choice of getting on the Kong train. You know, for those out there who don't know, it's pronounced Kongan water, not Kangan water. And that's why Kong exists, because I always say, how do you think that gorilla got so big? Well, it depends on what part of the country you're from. You could be saying it differently. We can be like, Kongan water. You know, <laughs> wherever you're from, you'd be from the south or you're from New York, you'd be like, Kongan water. You yeah, know, exactly. You're... You know. <laughs> well, you know, what I kind of do is I fall back to the beautiful lady inside the machine because she's the one who says it the way it's supposed to be said. And so she, she always know, talks. Like, she always I, talks sweet to me, man. Like she's <laughs> like, you're getting some nine and a half water right here. Water. <laughs> well, it's kind of funny, too, because I've always called Kong a boy. And um, oh, that's true. She, Recently, my sweetie said, hey, that's a bunch of bull. That's a bunch of bull. Kong's a girl. And She's like, a lot sexier than some dude. How do you say that? And, he, and she says, well, just listen to the machine. It's a girl <laughs> in there. That's a girl's voice. That's not a boy's voice. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? You got me there, honey. I, I guess that Kong is a girl. <laughs> it's better than like the Darth Vader voice or something like that, you know. Like, <laughs> Drink your water. Yeah, exactly. Like, like. Dark I thought you just sounded there. like Pinocchio. <laughs> well, you know, whoever. That's how big my nose is, you know. <laughs> Grant, you know, we got we got my brother Wetzel in the house this morning, and uh, you know, you two, you two got to meet. I'm looking forward to when you two get to meet because he's five foot. Yeah, 20. Right. You're you're what five foot sixteen? <laughs> um, five feet twenty inches. Five foot twenty, nice. I haven't done the math on mine, but I'm still six four. Well, you're five sixteen, then, big fella. Okay, sorry, I'm a, I'm a shorty. <laughs> nice shooting guard. No nah, hell no, man. Shooting guard, you can crash, get rebounds over those oh. little six one midgets. I'll take you all day, buddy. Get on my squad. Yeah, I'll shoot the three. You get the rebound. <laughs> hey, giddy up. I'm all <laughs> right on. Where you out of, brother? Uh, Maine. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. great state of Maine. Giddy up. I yeah. can dig it. Yeah, I think we got more cows than people. Where it is, uh, uh, that's ironic. There. <laughs> nice. I wouldn't know Maine to be a beef state, but I could dig it without a shovel. No, nah, it's really not. It's more like potatoes. Okay. It's only because we like vodka. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing there's not more Russians up here. Green <laughs> <laughs> Tupel distilled. Right, right. We're not that quite sophisticated yet. 
<laughs> no, that's all right. Hey, you ain't been to Montana yet, man. So uh, we'll have to keep that one open. <laughs> True story. True story. I got to see the mountains, you know. Oh, man. I'm well, like, yeah, right on, Jay John. Forgive me for being late running on uh, Bitterrooter time, but uh, had to jump on. I, uh, yeah, just knee deep in the hoopla. I figured that I'd share with my red cup with your uh, guest. How funny is that? I got an orange cup. Stands for one thing. Oh no, is that a Puff Flyers? Hell yeah. Oh, <laughs> Lindros, baby. Right? <laughs> Lindros. Yeah, Legion of Doom. So, nice. Grant, let's get to it. I want to ask you, you know, I'm always interested to hear. I mean, I, I personally know sort of what your story is because. You know, I'm the I'm the the fella that's been dripping on you for the last year and a half. But uh, you know, why don't you tell everybody how, how, when, and why did you decide to get involved with Kong and Water, and and did you think it was a, a you know were you a skeptical person like I was? Well, uh, put it this way, like you you bugged me about a year and a half ago when we kind of first interacted on social media on Facebook, and. You know, you sent me some information. I was like passively interested. Uh, you sent me the science videos and I checked them out. And at, with my girlfriend at the time, we looked at it. I mean, even at that time, it was pretty obvious that I was, I was just blown away by the science of it. You know, sure, I had my doubts. You know, I mean, I still came back to you, you know, over the le next year and a half with questions about it, like where the thing came from, what the company was about how they made the machines, what made it possible, what made it work. Um, basically just checking on the, the legitimacy of this whole thing, because I mean, it's a lot of money that, you know, we're asking people to invest in this thing. And I get that, like, you know, people, people are in debt, like people got money struggles, money problems, you know, debt from college, debt from their house, debt from their marriage, debt from just medical bills, you know, whatever it might be. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, the cost of this machine in comparison is really not that much. And especially if you can do it on a 0% interest credit card or, you know, even through an Agic. And Agic does their own 0% interest, you know, uh, portion, you know, which is what I'm doing. And it, it makes it affordable. The, the question then is, you know, how effective is this machine? Is it a scam or is it just another one of those stupid promotions that you can get into, the, one of those multi-level marketing things that people try to sell you on some, the next great thing, the next, like you should do the juice plus because we make these prepackaged powdered things that you add to your water and, you know, it gives you all the nutrients you need for the day. And the, and the fact is, I mean, now that I'm in this and I'm really researching this, this water, it, nothing compares to the antioxidant level of this water, nothing. Avocados, you know, like we were talking about yesterday, I'm like, I want to see somebody I will watch you. I will pay somebody to eat 42 friggin' avocados, and I'll watch you. I will watch you eat that. I'll watch you eat five quarts of blueberries to match one glass of this water. And it's like, if you're not drinking this water, it's almost insane because that's how good it is for you. And it's, you know, they, there's other water products. People have come to me and said, like, what about essential water? It's nine and a half pH ionized water. Well, the bottom line is you can't bottle this water. It only lasts for a few days. And the reason is, is it starts losing those hydrogen ions. It starts losing the charge. So, yeah, you still get like the 9.5 pH water. Sure, that's great. It's probably good for your gut health. But it's not going right to your brain. You're still not digesting it as quickly as this right out of the, the tap, Kangen 9.5. Yeah. Amen, brother. Amen. Right? And I, I feel great. Like my energy, I, I can't even tell you, I've never felt better. I mean, for the last couple of years, it's, a, it's been a struggle to get out of bed in the morning. It's like my bed is way more comfortable than the, the air outside, you know? So it's like, I'll just lay here for a little bit longer. You know, my body hurts and I'm groggy and I'm like, I can't get wait to get that cup of coffee, you know, so I can wake up. I don't even need coffee anymore. I mean, I love coffee. I still drink coffee. I make my coffee with this water. And man, the flavor is better, and I think the caffeination is better. The, the zing is more on top of it, and that's that. You know, kind of goes without saying because it has it's been electrified. Yeah, awesome. So what you know what what changed? I know that you know it was a year and a half of of looking and 
you know, kind of peeking over the fence and, you know, maybe all climbing up on there a little bit, but, but, uh, you know, what, what ended up ultimately being the, the thing that, that made you go ahead and put that flight suit on and jump off the cliff? I would say, you know, it's kind of a, a, a combination of a couple things. One is, um, you know, I knew the science was there, it was there and it was legitimate. Um, it was about getting myself into a financial place that I felt comfortable. You know, last couple of years, five years ago, I got divorced. Um, I had massive debt when I got divorced. My, my job was in jeopardy. I had to rebuild my business. Um, and I had credit card debt that was exceeded. I mean, my debt itself exceeded what, like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 just in credit card divorce debt. And then I had my mortgage and my car debt on top of that. And it was really hard to envision taking on more debt. I mean, it's a mental block, you know, it's a mental state of mind. It's, it's, you got to prepare yourself to take the jump. And you know, I, I posted a video just now about that, how it's, it's, it's a state of mind that we need to get ourselves to, to be able to be prepared for that opportunity that presents itself. If we're not ready for an, a life-changing opportunity, if we talk about it all the time, we can talk about it, but it doesn't mean we're mentally prepared to actually do it. And um, so the financial end of things was, was a big component. Uh, the other major component was my health itself. I mean, I hate going to the doctor. Absolutely hate going to the doctor. I, I want nothing to do with pharmaceutical drugs and medication. And, you know, you go into the doctor and you say, man, I, you know, I hurt here, I hurt there, I get stomach issues or whatever it might be. And the first thing they freaking do is send you a drug. I, have no, I want nothing to do with that. So I'd much rather exhaust every opportunity to take natural medicine, natural remedies, um, <clears throat> you know, drink tea. Uh, you know, there's uh, elderberry syrup, if you get a cold, there's all kinds of natural ways to take care of yourself. And the reason I know that is because I've done the research on, on history. It's Hippocrates. We still, doctors take the Hippocratic Oath, or at least they're freaking supposed to, which is an oath to take care of their patients and make sure that the patients are, are cured. I mean, Hippocrates believed that he could cure almost anything, disease, virus, whatever, by, by the food that you ingest. Change your food. Your food is your medicine. Medicine is your food. I mean, it's a pretty simple concept that has been forgotten because we're bombarded by McDonald's and Coke and all this crap that's out, candy bars and sodas and all this junk that's out there. And then we say, oh man, I don't feel good. My body doesn't feel good. I'm going to go to a doctor who's invested in a pharmaceutical drug company because they're getting kickbacks every time they sell a drug. And that's what they're going to give me. Instead of saying, hey man, you might want to change what you're eating. Yeah, isn't that the truth, man? And uh, you know, so you've been you've been now drinking the water for a couple of weeks, um, and I know you've talked about your energy being good. What about uh, what about? I know you're you're a single father with two young kids, and you have custody of them. Uh, what uh, what's what's their experience been with it? How's it? Oh, oh this, is, this, in that department? this is this is actually a kicker because I almost took a video of my, my eldest son. He plays hockey uh, pretty much five, six days a week. And um, yesterday he had practice and he finished up practice and he just came right out of the blue and said, dad, dad, this is great. Like normally at practice, I have to take a break every 10, 15 minutes to get a drink of water. He says, I didn't need to take a break the whole practice because what did I do? I pack his bottled water. I say, actually sent the kids to school with their own water bottles today with this water in it. At practice, I make him, I, before we go, I fill up his water bottle and I said, you need to drink this an hour before your practice, as much of this as you can, because if you drink this now, and I've known this since I was a kid being hydrated, my dad used to tell me the same thing, drink all this water now so you have a chance to break it down and your body can use it so you won't need as much during the game. Um, but if you have electrolyzed water, it's 10, at least, well, I, I think I calculate it's about 400 to 600% better than anything else you can drink. So if you drink this now, you won't need, really need to hydrate while you're out there. And, and that's what he said. I mean, just out of the blue, he told me yesterday, and I, I, I want to take a video of him saying it, if I can convince him to do it without being scared of the camera. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you know, it's been life changing for them. Like their energy is better. My thoughts are clear. Like my, I'm just my everything I about what I've experienced over the last two weeks is a million times better. My thoughts are clear. Uh, I feel refreshed. My body doesn't hurt as much. I mean, I've had back problems for the last eight, nine years. Um, I threw my back out about eight years ago and it's, it's finally like, it's on the up and up. It's getting a lot better, but you know, I've had inflammation. I started getting feeling arthritis and pain in my fingers. Um, and that has since gone away. And, and the fact is I can't stop drinking this water. I can't get enough of it. It's not like, you know, you drink some water in the past, like before I had this machine, you drink some water and you'd fill up and you just kind of feel full and maybe a little bit bloated and you feel it kind of sloshing in your stomach. This doesn't happen. It doesn't matter how much I drink of it. And if I drink three glasses, yeah, it might be full and have enough, but 10, 15 minutes later, I can have more. And I want more. And it's really, it's the only thing I want. I mean, I go to the grocery store, I go anywhere and that's all I see is poison. So I'm just like, why would you drink anything else? You don't need anything else. And I did that video yesterday on the, uh, the lawnmower, the push mower with the oil spill in my shed. I mean, it's just mind blowing the capabilities of this thing. You don't need chemicals anymore. It's crazy. <laughs> That's something I wanted to ask you about. How did that end up working out? You didn't end up showing how it cleaned up. Did it? Uh, did everything clean up real nice? And I, I didn't go like to town on it, you know, but it, it, I think the video showed that it broke, broke up the oil, you yeah. know, which you couldn't pour regular water on that. You'd need a chemical solution of some sort for it to do that. So I haven't, I haven't gone to town on it. I got to go back out there and, and do some more, you know, maintenance in the aisle nine. But, you know, it's, it's, get, it's, it did something. I barely, I never put my fingers into that paper towel. All I did was just kind of drag the paper towel through that oil as right. it was breaking it up. Yeah, that was, that it just blew problem. me away. Just blew me away. I mean, <laughs> no, no matter how many times you've told me, yeah, this is what it does. It gets better with age. And you let it sit in this bottle for a while and you can use this paint thinner. And it's like, all right, all right, John, you know, I got to check this thing out for myself. <laughs> so I get it. I get people that are apprehensive about this stuff because, you know, there's so many gimmicks. There's so many scams out there. There's so many people like somebody from India, like, hey, do you want to buy like, you know, you know, it's like, no, I don't want to buy that thing. Like, stop, go away, you know, hang up. I mean, you know, your, your car's warranty has run out, you know, or whatever it is. It's like everything's being, being sold to you. And the bottom line is that's what we're up against. We're up against like, you know, someone said yesterday, well, you know, it's kind of annoying how many videos and how much information you're posting about this stuff. I'm like, dude, you're bombarded by Coke commercials. You don't care about that. And that's crap. That's literally poison in a bottle. And you don't, you know what I'm saying? You actually enjoy watching the commercial during Super Bowl, Super Bowl commercial time. You know, people watch the Super Bowl just to watch the stupid commercials about products and crap that they don't need. But me telling you, you have a life-changing opportunity with this water. Like, oh, my word, stop selling me stuff. Get out of here. Yeah, isn't that crazy? You know, so, I, mean, I got a song it's, for that, J. John. Everybody's, what's that? Indoctrination. Indoctrination. It's making me crazy. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> You need to start a band. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when Wetz is in the house. He always adds such great humor to the show. You remind me of Steven Tyler with that voice. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hey. Dude looks like a lady. Whatever, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, you know, I, there's something else I would love to have you expand on, if you don't mind, Grant. Um, the other day we were talking and, and one of the things that I've always said to people about this water, because it's just a flat out fact of the matter, is that when you drink this water, this water actually gets to your brain before it actually gets to your stomach. And then people have a hard time grasping that, but, but it really is true. And you just kind of talked about it, how you can drink so much of it without it getting into your stomach and blah, sloshing around and that kind of thing. I'm curious, um, you know, you've got a couple of youngins and, and uh, you know, what, 
So I know you were talking about your oldest child that, that's been really, you know, it's been really helpful with his, with his hockey plan and, and that kind of thing. And he's been able to push himself harder without having to take breaks. And that's a pretty common occurrence too. But didn't you, it seemed like you mentioned something to me a while back about, about your, your younger kid. What, uh, what kind of benefits has, has he been able to benefit? You know, what, what kind of things have you noticed with him drinking the water? It's really interesting, you know, before, you know, for the last, you know, I got divorced, what, four and a half years ago, he was one years old when we got divorced. And, um, you know, he's, his behavior has been an absolute battle, an absolute struggle. And um, his attitude, his, his fits, everything. I mean, he's five years old now, he'll be six in September. And, you know, two weeks ago, we got this water. And I, I swear, man, a couple days after having this water machine and making them drink it, because, like, I won't let my kids drink anything else. My kid walks around. I saw my kid walk around with a bottle of friggin' Poland spring water, and I, I called him. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And he looks at me. He's like, what? What, Dad? What do you mean? I'm like, what are you drinking that for? Dump that shit out. So it's like. I don't let them take a break on this water either. When they get up in the morning, it's the first thing we do because I was reading that you got to drink water when you first get up before each meal. They recommend 30 minutes before each meal and then before you go to bed. So that's five times a day that you got to drink a glass of water. Well, they recommend eight each day. Well, you've already got five when you wake up before each meal and before you go to bed, there's five. So you only need three more times that you're drinking this drinking water to satisfy the eight, eight ounce glasses a day. So anyway, so I make my kids get up first thing, drink this water. And a couple days after drinking it, my youngest, his behavior like was almost night and day, almost night and day as far as uh, being better, having a better attitude, having a better outlook on life. I mean, I've said it about myself with the, you know, we know it goes to the pineal gland and it activates the pineal gland, which is one of the reasons you drink it before you go to bed because it put, it helps you go to sleep, but it helps your dreams and your thought processes as well. I feel a hell of a lot sharper. It's just, I'm not, I don't try to make how I feel things. Like I don't try to dream like, Oh, I feel freaking great because I'm drinking this water. I mean, we know that everything we do is based on thought. So, you know, people take medication and because the doctor says you need this and it'll take care of you, make you healthier. We think, it's helping us because that's what we're encouraged to believe. So when we think positively in that regard, then the medicine does kind of help us in that way, even though it's kind of chemical based. So, you know, I don't try to invent how I feel about this stuff. Like I just let it be. I let, I, I just try to have, feel how it goes down and how it, I ingest it. Um, I don't feel it per se in my stomach. I feel it hit my stomach liner. That's what it feels like, a tingling on my stomach liner, which is really interesting. If I overdrink it, yeah, maybe I get a little excess in the stomach, but it's not there for very long. Um, but as far as the brain's concerned, man, I've, I've never been more heightened and more aware of my, my life, my situation. I'm way more confident. Um, and then my kids, too. I mean, it's just they're smart as, smart as a whip before. And, and, man, since this water, I kid you not, I mean, they're just they're starting to – blow up themselves you know the reason i bring that up is just because of the fact that there's so many people out there that their kids you know back when when i was growing up if i was if i had lots of energy and was running around like a like a top that had just been spun really hard um that was just normal kid behavior now it's a disease now it's uh, something that needs drugs for it and that kind right. of right and um you know, so my my question to you is at this point is because I think you have a really good handle on this kind of thing, and you might be a really good you might be a really good person for you know to offer a little bit of advice in this in this regard because you've gone through it yourself. Where I can't really give this kind of advice because I don't have kids, I haven't been through that kind of thing, and so I just simply don't know. But um, you know, you, you know, there's a lot of parents out there that are, that are struggling with their unruly kid that's got attitude, that's got this, that, and the other, you know, and throwing tantrums or whatever the heck it might be. What kind of advice would you give to those people in regards to, to what, how it's helped you and what, you know, what, 
you know, what would you say to those people? I always think of, you know, third world countries, how kids live in third world countries. They have nothing. They're happy with a stick. They're happy with a, a broken soccer ball because it's even if it's got no air in it, they got something that's better than nothing. You know, a, a milk carton, a milk, one of those milk crates or whatever that's hanging on a, on a post and they're playing with a dead air basketball. You know, they don't, they don't care. They're, they're happy if they get food. They're happy if they get water. They're happy if they, you know, they can get a, sh a bath. You know, I, and I, I tell my kids about that stuff all the time, how lucky we are, how privileged we are, how spoiled we are. And it's like, if you don't appreciate every little, and that's gratitude. It's really, the, the solution is gratitude, is that we don't have enough appreciation for life and our own life. And it's like, I got a roof over my head. 4% of the world has, has water that you can shower with. Warm, hot, showering water. 4% of the world. That's something you can be grateful for every single day. Same with food. Like, we get a variety of things that we can eat. There's tons of kids in foreign countries, in our own country, that don't get to eat, that don't get a warm house to sleep in. I mean, I lived in Philadelphia. You see, you see bums on the street. They're covered in newspapers in January. That's what's keeping them warm is a friggin' newspaper. So we're lucky. And if my kid is going to throw a fit because they don't like what I'm serving for dinner that night, or they don't like how they're not getting TV, or they don't like whatever it might be, too bad. Too friggin' bad. Go to your room. You can sit up in there and think about it. I really don't care because you're lucky you have everything you have. Right. That's about it. I take stuff away. I have no problem taking stuff away. And this is where parents struggle, is that they don't want to see their kid suffer. They don't want to see their kid be disappointed. It's hard. I get it. It hurts to see your kid, you know, struggle and cry and be upset. But you know what? That's life. Life is disappointing. Life is largely disappointing. And so it just facilitates growth. You're just seasoning them up and giving them a sense of how to get through shit when it gets real. Boom. Our story is oddly similar, man. Did you play hoops in college? <laughs> I should have. <laughs> well, no, with the size, it's just funny. You talk about all this stuff, everything, your lower back, your kids, raising them, all that stuff. And it's interesting, the experiences. No, I just like your style, man. You're very direct, and you're going to be doing your kids a huge favor when the world's shoving a bunch of sunshine up their ass they're not being prepared for the clouds when they leave home. Right. So, you know, as much as you're loving them and guiding them, giving them the right support and direction, it's always based on love and guidance. But just the same, man, tough love has been a commodity that's been shoved to the sidelines where all the exhibitionist PC all-stars are out there running around showing off. Exactly. And they're not really playing the game. They're playing an exhibition. They're not competing. They're out there just doing their thing and letting everybody know how mediocre they are. Yeah, living my best we're, life, right? We're screaming mediocrity and we're bragging about it today. Yeah. So everything you're talking about, dude, I just love the parenting side of it because at the end of the day, man, your kids are going to benefit from it. And again, dads have been getting their asses kicked for years in so many regards, you know. And uh, I'm just really grateful and thankful that those kids got a solid ass cat like you calling the shots because at the end of the day, they're going to be in a better position to score because you're putting them in position to do so. Um, so, yeah, giddy up. Just had to throw that in there, dude. I just keep laughing going, God, who is this? Guy? Yeah, no, it's, it's 100% because it's like, you know, either, you're the parent. You're, you're in charge. You're in charge. You're the legal guardian of these kids. You sign every freaking document this kid has to deal with, whether it's the YMCA, your school. It doesn't matter what it is. Your kid wants to do something, my signature's on it, right? right. So what does that mean? I'm big boss, man. You want something done, you want something anywhere, you got to talk to me first, which means I'm leading the pack. My kids don't run the household. I run the household, and they're looking for guidance. And the bottom yeah. line is you want to grow the – they're like birds, right? The mother bird doesn't push their, their, their babies out until they got wings. And even then, sometimes they push them out anyway and say, too bad, go fly. Like, figure it out, make it happen. And that's what it's like being a parent for your kids is when they turn 18, it's time to freaking fly. Yeah. No, that's and I don't it. want 
I don't want dependent kids. I don't want my kids living with me when they're 18, 25 years old. If they have to, fine. But I really, like, my goal is to buy my kid a one-way ticket to somewhere else. 20, I read an read a, uh, a article, I don't know, it was probably in the last six, eight months. 27% of your 25-year-olds are living at home with mom and dad right now. 30-year-olds. 30, 30 it, but again, in, and you can get into that. I just remembered that going at 25. Shit, I was married, had a kid. I was playing college ball. I was in a whole different realm. Right. Well, actually, I was in grad school by then. But at the end of the day, you know, what you're saying is you're going back to that old school preparation mode, you know, and that's it. I mean, that, there's nothing more to it. You're preparing them. And now right. that you got this water you're just facilitating so many dimensions of their growth and development mentally, physically. You're just putting them in good positions to succeed, man. And I just got to tick my hat off to you, even though I took it off a minute ago. <laughs> hey, yeah, I mean, I would lay my life down for my kids. A million percent. Right, I would take tell. a bullet for my kids. If someone's going to got one bullet in their gun and they're going to shoot it at me or my kids, guess who's going to take the frigging bullet? I am, easy. right? Easy. It's an easy answer, right? So we, yep. we, as parents, we do. We want to love and take care of our, and nurture our kids. But you have to have the tough love aspect. You have to, you can't just give them all good things because then if they, if something's not so good, that's when the fits start. Oh, mom, right. I'm really upset that I didn't get a lollipop after yep. I had my hot dog. And it's like, right. excuse me. Like the kid in Zimbabwe doesn't have a, even a hot dog. He doesn't even have a hot dog. He's eating mud pies over there, whatever he's eating. Like, you know, send him a zucchini plant, you know, so, something. <laughs> like, I like to tell kids, I'm, I'm coaching junior high kids and they're transitioning, man, from the little boys to young adults. And a lot of them still, you know, the coconuts haven't dropped yet. The voices are still high squeaky. And some of them are now, and they got the cackly, you know, like robot voice, like the whole, you know, synthesized voice or whatever you call those things in music today. They all use them. You know, the voice is transitioning. And then these kids, I tell them, I'm like, look, man, you guys need to start understanding you need to earn your own keep. You know, and the fact that you guys sit and negotiate at home with mom and you talk back and you do all that shit, that ain't for here. And I'll tell you right now, as much as you ain't going to, do that ever with your coach you've got to go home and realize that hey your folks your mom particularly she's telling you what she needs to tell you you got to listen to it because you don't pull that shit when dad's around when dad comes home what do you guys do boy they all buttoned up and they were all i'm like see and that's the game yeah i and i told him i says i'm raising i'm raising sheldon on my own he doesn't have a mom so I've got to be mom. I've got to be dad. I've got to be big brother. Sometimes I step out of that and I got to be uncle because it's all then at that point, uncle, there's no pressure. There's it's just, we're visiting and we're chilling, but I'm never his buddy. Yes. I'm never his buddy. I, I shouldn't, I, I, I would, I would slightly disagree with that only because I am absolutely a hundred percent got his back. Like I want to no, play, game, play games with you. I want to play catch. I want to play football. Like, I'm his buddy in that way. Like, I will take care of you. I will give you advice. I will help you when you need help. Like, I am there for you a million percent. And I think it's really important that our kids know that. Like, that is, you know, a lot of the problems that we face in this world, whether it's between adults or between adults and kids or whatever, is a lack of communication. And it's literally as simple as saying, hey, I got you, man. I got your back. And I've said that to my kids. I got your back. You know, my kid was struggling with something, you know, whatever, a couple of years, uh, like a year ago, six months to a year ago. And that's exactly what I told him. I said, yeah. life's tough. You're going to be faced with disappointment, but 100%, I am right here with you. And you they know, and that's, need that. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And what we're talking about here really translates now into this new direction you're taking with the water. I mean, you know, you got your buddies talking about the Super Bowl and, you know, commercials and all your posts and stuff and basically you're trying to help him understand how much you care about him and how much you you're trying to have his back even though he doesn't need it think it's unprotected you know because that's what it's all about and what we're doing is we're just truly trying to wake people up to the realities of wellness in the simple 
Sam Tran always talks about simplifying. You know, we're in a world of just excessive complication. And this allows us to simplify. Right. You know, it allows us to absolutely simplify what we're doing with our health, with our financial situation. It's just simplifying life by it's being to, absolutely it's, and supremely hydrated. It's so hard to change minds. About, every time you talk about being a parent, all this stuff, it translates almost directly into our roles as Kong and distributors. Am I right, yeah. Jay John? What do you think about that? Hey, man, I, I agree with it 100%. And, you know, I'm really excited about this show this morning because, you know, I love all you guys that are on here. And, and it's really neat to have you all in here. And, and, and I, we've got one of my favorite people in the whole wide world is over on the right hand side of the screen. His name's Dan Edlin. Nice. And, um, and I'd love to, you know, Dan, I've, I've been wanting to, to kind of introduce you to, to Grant. And so this is actually a perfect opportunity. I wonder if you might chime in for a second and, uh, you know, just kind of give Grant some thoughts on what you what you've been listening to and where you've been with this business and you know that kind of thing because you're you're one of the great ones that are in this company, brother. Well, I think um, well, first of all, hello and good morning to everybody. Um, I think I've I've already interacted, I believe, with Grant on a couple different posts. Um, I noticed that he was new, so I definitely do want to welcome him. Uh, I've seen actually some really cool content out of him and. Um, you know, so I so when I see that from somebody, especially um, when I know they're new, and especially when I know that they kind of are involved with people that I know, I really try and come out and support their posts as long as I feel like, you know, they're they're bringing some value. And um, so I've been watching a lot of his early stuff, and um, you know, definitely just want to say welcome. Appreciate it. Awesome. Um, so what's that? What's that, JJ? What would you like me to uh, elaborate on today? Well, you know, I just. I, you're just such a, a great influence in this in this company the where you've been and, and where you've come to and you know just the fact that you were in here i just thought i'd give you an opportunity to you know to just say whatever that you you know whatever might come to your mind uh, as to what we've been talking about and you know where, where we've been where we're going and well i i heard a lot of talk about kids and i'm, I'm not great in that department so i'm not going to speak on that i'm a grandfather so I appreciate both of theirs advice and I'm going to try and do the best I can at that role. But here's what I got to say about Kong and water. Don't quit. No one knows what we know. Be diligent, be persevere and don't in, let anybody dissuade you. I, I was making my smoothie and I heard, I believe it was Grant say it's hard to change people's minds. It is incredibly hard to change people's minds, but what we do is we stay persistent in our action and what happens eventually is we, we hope for, for an awakening. So we, we sift through the people that are closed minded. We don't become, um, you know, we're not arm twisters, right? We're, we're seed planters. And I'll, I'll give you a, a little evidence of that. So actually last week on Thursday, I sold an SD501 to the third person that I'd ever in my entire life spoke to Kong and Water about. But it's four, four and a half years later, right? And the funny thing was, is, you know, it's just one of those things, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm what they call a dripper. So I'm an expert. I mean, I'll, I'll say that. I think I'm an expert in follow-up. So I have a very, very unique system where I drip on people, constant new information. Hey, Grant, you know, it's not, it's not new. I'm not bothering you if I'm providing you with new information. So when I reach out to people, I do that constantly. That's part of the follow-up. Hey, JJ, you know, saw this information, really thought it pertained to you and your family, just thought you might want to take a look. Stuff like that. I'm not asking you to buy anything. I'm not asking you to do anything. And the funny thing was is so four and a half years later, you know, bam, there it is. So it's just being persistent, being diligent, and knowing that, uh, you know, not everybody in the world knows what we know, but eventually everybody in the world will know what we know. 100%. That's kind of, that's kind of my angle right now is like, I, you know, I could sell a machine. I could not sell a machine. It really makes no difference to me at this point. You know, I'm just kind of filling people in and giving people the information and they get to make the decision themselves. If For it sure. takes them a while to make that decision, that's fine by me. I really don't care. You know, like right. my, I expect more results in the next six months to a year. Like, there you, go. you yeah. know, 
maybe I'll get somebody to buy one this month. I don't know. That if they want to change their life, they will. Right. Right. And the thing is, is, you know, we're, we're dealing with, um, you know, we're, we're dealing with a lot of limited beliefs. We're dealing with people's self-imposed thoughts. We're dealing with um, a scarcity mentality and, and limiting beliefs. And people, you know, will figure that, you know, if it's so good, why haven't I heard about it? And that people are so conditioned in this country and, and they have such limited beliefs because of it. So the thing is, is, you know, um, we, we need to be seed planters. We need to be diligent. And I saw you got up and walked away for a second there. I don't know if you heard exactly what I said. I did. In, in, in regards to that where, hey, Grant, you know what? I know that it wasn't the right time for you, but I saw this. I thought about you and your family. Thought you might want in the information. I'm not asking you to do anything, or, but I just keep that constant peppering and peppering and peppering. And that's how nine months, 12 months, 16 months later, you get the benefit of the work that's done before you because what's going to happen in your life, and you're going to find this to be a truth, is sometime down the road, your phone is going to ring because you planted a seed. And if you do it correctly and you don't leave the relationship in a bad way, what's going to happen is they're going to go, you still doing that thing? And you're going to be like, yeah, man, of course. And they're going to be like, you know, it's funny. I walked into my chiropractor's office or you know what? I ran into this guy with the gym with the bottle and he was telling me how it's, it's amazing. You can know somebody your whole life and you think they would know, like, and trust you. And even though they do, they need to hear it from a perfect stranger. They need to see it in a place they've never seen it before. Uh, my phone has rang 30 times in the last three years of people going, I'm ready. And I'm like, why now? I mean, I haven't, I mean, I already done the water share or I've done the home demo or I've gone in their house or they've been to mine and all of a sudden the phone rings and you're always baffled by, th that's my first question is why now? And it's always, you know, I walked into my chiropractor's office and he said it was the greatest thing in the world. And I'm like, you don't even know that guy. You know what I mean? You've known right. me for 17 years. So we don't care. It takes what it takes, but um, you know, it's that third party validation. So who's your upline? Uh, Jay John. Okay. So, so you're good. So you're, you, you've got a lot of resources available to you, including yeah. somebody like me. So the I mean, thing is, Jay, Jay Jay is fantastic. I mean, I can't sure. thank him enough for the support that he's been there for me on every post that I have. I mean, he's Absolutely. very, very supportive and, and that's really, the, the, one of the best things about belonging to this is that I've seen tremendous social media support from people from all over the globe. Right. And, you know, I've tried other multi-level marketing things. Um, you know, they were maybe a little bit harder to believe in. Um, mm -hmm. but we also didn't have the social networking tied in like, like an adjective does. And right. It makes a huge difference to get that support. And so, you know, in, in, in your introductions at some point, you know, you'll become very good at using the third party validation that's a, available to you. So that's one way to go about it. A phone call with JJ, or maybe you get a finance guy and you're like, oh man, that guy, Dan in Seattle, let me have him, you know, or somebody that's challenged credit wise. And you want to be able to have that conversation. There's so many conversations we have to have to overcome these false objections that people have. But the thing is third party validation in the intro and then third party validation down the road because I'm just promised, I promise you, brother, your phone will ring one day and it, it'll be a year, year and a half from now and somebody's going to go, you know, I saw that somewhere else and I guess it's just time. And it happens to me, you know, quite often now and I just love it because it's the easiest phone calls because you've already done the work. You talked to them a long time ago. You drip a little video every two or three months. You let them know that you care and one day the phone will ring. It's just doing, it's building the foundation. It's just like, just build, like sure. building the house, you know, and, and my painting business, I've, I've run a couple businesses. I do painting and carpentry now. Um, I've run a bed and breakfast. I grew up in a bed and breakfast. Um, but, you know, probably more relatable is the painting and carpentry because I started from nothing. You know, people might have know, known who I was or known my name, you know, neighbors or friends or whatever, and that's how you start. But you're not like, your phone's not ringing off the hook. Well, I've been in this business for eight years now. And now I have so much work, I can't, I'm turning it away. So it's the same idea. You know, you're just peppering people with what you do. And it really doesn't matter what you do. The, the, the reward in self-employment, instead of selling for somebody else, you're selling for yourself. So it's an easy sell because you are invested in every little bit of income that comes in and every expense. So it's easy to talk about what you do. I mean, that's why I got this shirt, because I made this shirt because this is my business. I could either wear Nike or I can wear my own business. Why not sell your own business? 
Can I ask what it, it says? I'm seeing I'm here all. Oh, okay. There you go. I didn't see the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here all day. <laughs> I love it. You know, I'm, I'm, a bas I'm a basketball player, so I'm like, I'm here all day. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the rock, baby. Give me the rock. I'll be here all day. Yeah, you'll love it, Wetzel, because now he's a zebra. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, I transitioned to a basketball official. Oh, bless it was your like, heart. That's a dying breed. It is. There's, it doesn't matter what sport it is. No. <laughs> because refs are too tired of dealing with entitled, thin-skinned kids and parents well, barking from the sidelines because you're not making Johnny look good like we do at home, shoving all that sunshine up his gazoo. Well, that and, and the kids that are coming up today aren't you know, able to deal with that kind of banter either. I mean, no. you, I, you, seriously, if you think about you know, kids in 1941 – 16, 17, 18 years old, storming Normandy Beach. I mean, could you imagine if we sent our 16, 17, and 18 year olds today to Normandy? They'd be like, no freaking way. No. Where's my safe spot? Huh? They'd be that, they'd be, Where's my safe spot? Right, right. Where's my safe space? It's like, this is your safe <laughs> space until we open the door and then you gotta go shoot somebody. Like, you know, <laughs> great freaking grow up. Oh, I broke a nail. Like, do you for crying out loud grow up you know but that's the problem is that we have a, a massive problem with our youth and our society where we're not able to deal with disappointment we're always our parents have given us and it started after world war ii because all those soldiers came home and they didn't want to see death ever again it was so traumatizing so they, they ended up spoiling the baby boomers and giving them everything they wanted and not being disciplined like we were for so long. We lost that disciplinarian, you know? I mean, we've grown in a lot of ways too. I mean, no doubt about it. I think our parents love us more than they, you know, like my, my dad's parents loved him. You know, it was like, he had tough love. <laughs> Talk about tough love, you know, you got the belt. <laughs> a little pal with holes in it. Right. Right. I mean, we all got our stories, you know, and when, when the next generation comes up and they're our age and they're like, man, I wasn't beat with anything. I was just given more candy to shut up and more Teletubbies or, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> oh, I love play, play, me, placate me with more TV, you know, or more iPad time. You know, my, my, I was at a, a hockey tournament this weekend and my five-year-old is the only kid in the whole place that doesn't have a phone or an iPad. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. I love it. Dude, I love That's that, so man. Cheap. I think you're setting such an incredible example for your kids and for other people. <laughs> and, um, you know, well, we got a couple of, couple of little short subjects left to go here. And this has been a really... I know you've got a lot of stuff going on, and, and we all need to get on with our day. But I've had a hot date. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. I can't wait to, to see how that all turns out. Yeah, but, I won't uh, share it on social media, so you won't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, you're out there, and, and, you know, who knows? You might have just the perfect example to, to your hot date that you're going to, but you're – you're out there, you're at the coffee shop, you're at the grocery store, you're wherever, and you only have a couple of seconds, you know, you got maybe 30 seconds, a minute at tops to, to like, get somebody to get their brain cell turning. What, what's your go-to move? You have one yet? It's only Oh, like it's, su it's, su it's super easy. It's super easy because you, you develop the relationship. The key is, again, going back to communication. If we can communicate properly, and engage with the other person and develop some sort of common ground relationship um, and just talk about life or what, you eventually end up in a place where they say, hey, what do you do for work? 100% every time that comes up, what do you do for work? Or what do you do for the life? Because everyone's doing something. Everybody's working for somebody, right? So I just say, I sell water. And they look at me and they're just like, what? What do you mean you sell water? It's like, you sell Dasani? <laughs> you know, I'm like, no, no, I don't sell Dasani, but I sell this really cool water. It's, it's uh, you know, it's electrified water. And uh, it's a really interesting thing. It's a basically, they figured out a way to 
capture a lightning bolt inside of a box that obliterates water molecules. It's really neat. And I don't give them much more information than that because all you're really looking to do is, like you said, get the wheels spinning, get the thoughts going, like, this is weird. I've never heard it. I mean, water is such a simplistic term to people. They don't think about it. We're 75% water, the planet's 75% water, plants are 75% water, but we don't really consider how effective water is in our body and, and in the world. So just to intrigue them, just say, I sell water, that's enough to be like, what the heck, what? <laughs> I love that. You know, that's, that's one of my favorite questions to ask on this show, and I ask every guest that question, and it is so interesting, all the different all the different methods of, you know, methods of madness that, that our distributors have out there. And it always ends up being uh, a beneficial thing. You know, one person, what, what works for one person might not work for another, but we, we get a lot of different ideas. And, and it kind of goes back to what you were talking about a little earlier about the support that you get in this company. It's just like Dan right there saying, hey, man, I got, you got somebody in the financial industry. I'm here, man. I, you know, you're not on my team, but we're in the same league, and I'm more than happy to be that third person that'll that'll help you out. You know, and and all the people that have been involved with this company for any period of time, every single one of them has helped somebody that was not on their team sell a machine. Right. And uh, and that's one of my favorite things, really, is to help somebody that's not on my team sell a machine. Yeah. And and it's um, you know I've sold a lot of machines for other people. Right now there was a time I'd sold more for other people than myself, but but it's kind of leveled out now, you know. And so it's pretty exciting. It's really gratifying and and just knowing that we're in such a life changing um, company. And you know our motto in this company is change your water, change your life. It's not change your job or your car or your house or your bank account or your shoes or your clothes. It's or eat this special food. Water. Yeah, yeah. And and you do. You you're lit, if you jump on board with this thing and take it seriously, it will change your life. It'll change your life in so many ways, from from how you feel about yourself to how you feel about other people to everything else. Which kind of brings us to my next part of this thing and that is that one of our big goals here of course our first goal is to change the world and and a big part of being able to accomplish that goal is sharing stories because it was a story that changed my life and I didn't care about all the all the facts and figures and science or any of that stuff it was a story that opened up my eyes that turned my three brain cells on mm -hmm. and um, so I I'm I'm hell bent to share as many stories as possible. But once those stories have been shared and people resonate with them, I want people who resonate with each other to, to hook up together. I want those people, you know, somebody down the road, because this is getting recorded, it's gonna go up on the YouTube channel, it's gonna be available to be shared far and wide to wherever. And if somebody wants to, to work with Grant Lippman, the, the things you said today resonated with them and they wanna work with you, I want them to be able to work with you, but if they can't get a hold of you uh, and they don't know how to contact you, then the, the chances of them being able to work with you are not very good. And so I like to give every guest the opportunity here to, to give all their information or none of their information. It's totally up to you, but I want to give you this opportunity to tell people, hey, how do, how do you get a hold of Grant Lippman? And, uh, you know, how do we work together? So whatever you'd like to give out to people, I'd appreciate it if you'd go ahead and do that right now. Yeah, um, you know, so it's kind of an interesting thing because, you know, you don't want to blow up your phone. It's almost like I need a separate business phone for this thing or something so that, you know, if I'm getting a thousand calls a day, I'm like, all right, I know who's calling me, you know, but uh, <clears throat> um, let me just think about that for a minute because I, I do want to set up some sort of separate, you know, Facebook page of some sort. I'm still working on my website. Um Probably best right now is that if you wanted to talk shop or, you know, communicate, um, you know, your, like your friends list is very limited. You're what limited to like 5,000 friends on Facebook or something like that. So that could, that's going to fill up really quickly because I'm getting a lot of friend requests. So I want to set up the second face, Facebook page, which I haven't done yet. Um, so maybe in the meantime, um, email would be really good. So my email is grant, G-R-A-N-T, dot Lippman, L-I-P-P-M-A-N, at gmail 
gmail.com. And, uh, you know, send me an email and I will definitely get back to you. Um, and then maybe if things go from there, we can, you know, contact each other on phone or private message or text message or whatever it is that, uh, how people want to communicate. But, you know, I'm, I'm here to, you know, work with people. I know that, you know, running businesses, it takes a lot of um, unpaid time to make yourself successful. So that's, that's the, uh, you know, the strategy and the state that I'm in right now is that I bought this machine. I'm 100% in the red. Um, but, you know, I know at some point if I, if I believe in this thing, which I do, you know, just persistence, like Dan said, um, staying after it, staying positive. I mean, I've worked a lot on myself. Um, I've read a lot of self-help books. Probably the one that was one of the bigger life-changing books I read was um, Dr. Wayne Dyer. Um, he was a psychologist therapist who was revolutionary in his, um, in his work and um, t tells a lot of personal experiences and things like that. But he wrote a book on Taoism. Uh, there's 81 verses of the Tao, which, I mean, if you read each one of those 81 verses, that was written tw uh, 2,400 years ago. And it's still true today. And he, Wayne Dyer breaks it down for you in his book called Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. Just like change your water, change your life, except in book form and Taoism form. And it's an absolutely phenomenal book. It's my Bible. Uh, you know, I've tried reading the Bible and I, I can't read the Bible. It's like, it's just hard. It's long, it's arduous, you know, it's just, it's a little bit confusing at times. And uh, this, this book, I forget how many pages, 200, 250 pages or something like that. They keep the 81 verses and it's maybe two or three pages per verse. So it's like, and if you read one verse a day, that's enough, like that's like eating a, a, a full meal, you know, because you got to digest that, that stuff. It's not going to just, you know, you got to think about it and sit on it and then apply it to your life throughout that day. And that's what it's made for. Wow, that's awesome. You know, that's the cool thing. We always get such great information on this show to, to give people ideas, ways that they can improve themselves. And, you know, it, it, it's just everybody that's here today is, is literally the epitome of what's so special about this company. It really is. It's, it's a life changer. And, and if you jump on board, it will change your life. And so we're about ready to wrap up here, buddy. And hey, I just JJ. wanted to ask you, you, oh, go ahead, Dan. Yeah. No, real quick. I wanted to, I wanted to mention what, what Grant was just talking about. So that is an absolute fabulous book, but for people that are a little bit lazier and can't find time to read or this, that, and the other, that a ton of that Wayne Dyer stuff is on YouTube. And sometimes I'll just have it playing like when I'm getting out of the shower and yes. I'll just listen to five or 10 minutes, but he'll just go through a couple of it. But there's a hundred different, from an hour and a half to five minute snippets of Wayne Dyer. And I highly support anybody getting involved with that on their daily, you know, their journey. Yes. Audiobooks, audiobooks. He has, he has one that's like a, a five hour or seven hour audiobook of different speeches that he gave. And you can just, I probably listen to it four or five times myself because it never gets old what he talks about. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, so that's some solid stuff for everybody. You know, this is going to be a really valuable episode as time goes by. I think there's been so much value shared here today. I really appreciate you coming and doing that, Grant. And, and before we head out, I just want to always like to give everybody that comes on an opportunity that, like, you got any last golden nugget you'd like to, to throw out before we jump out of this place and get on with our business of changing the world? Who's going to start? Am I going to start? Yeah, you are. You're the you're the man. <laughs> we're, just here, we're just here learning. All right, all right. So you know, the only thing I would say, you know, I I welcome people. I I have a very open mind. This is why I learned a lot from Wayne Dyer, and I learned a lot from you know I read about Socrates, and I've I've read you know different spiritual books and things like that. Open um, mindfulness from like meditative uh, practices, yoga. I've done yoga. I've done karate, and the biggest thing to me is is having an open mind. You have to be acceptable to information that you don't agree with because everything is important. Everything is valuable, even if you don't agree with it, because you might learn something. You can learn something from every single person you talk to, whether they're an asshole or they're not. So you got to listen to what they got to say. I've told people, they're like, I don't, I don't trust this water machine thing you're selling. I don't believe in it. It's a hoax or I'm, they're trying to debunk it. And I say, I welcome that. 
if you got something that's on this machine that doesn't isn't true, then tell me because I only care about one thing, the truth. It's the only thing that matters. So that's what I'll leave you with. I love it. No wonder we get along so well, brother, because that's all I care about too. I only care about the truth and and there is no such thing as my truth or your truth. There's just the truth. Right. And it doesn't matter what we think about it. It's not up to opinion. It it's is not what emotional. It is. And the, the truth lies somewhere. And so yeah, buddy. God, what a great what a great show today. And it's just such a blessing to have you on the team and with the family and and I look forward to, to all the worlds we're going to change over this next, uh, this next many, many years coming down the pike. It's going to be a heck of a journey. And, uh, you know, so everybody, thank you so much for being here. Everybody that's over on the live side, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. And, uh, you know, we are the Kong family. We're here to change the world. And, uh, hey, Sean, what, how, how is it again that we're doing that? One glass of hydrogen rich... <laughs> oxygen saturated supremely hydrating and absolutely delicious congan water 9.5 thank you kindly <laughs> Amen, brother one lightning bolt in a box one extremely awesome guest one fun and informative show one one incredible family at a time and so kids get out Please. there change the world starting with your own and of course as usual do not forget your hugs, kids. You need your hugs. Woody, yeah. If you don't get a hug today, at least hug yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. All right, kids. Love you guys so much. Thanks for being here. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Got another exciting guest tomorrow. We're coming in late in the afternoon. We're going to do a 4.30 p.m. Mountain Time show tomorrow. So love you guys. Get out there. Make it happen. Peace. Have a great day. Bye for now. All right, word. Smile, man. Here, guys. Careful out there, Rodgar. Watch out for them damn Anastasia. Will do, man. Have a great day. <laughs> you too. <laughs>